Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. As promised and anticipated, this is my birthing vlog of baby number two, little Oscar Thomas McGowan. So if you're here to hear all about my labor and birth with this little baby, then just keep on watching. So firstly, I will put in the description box my labor and delivery birth vlog with Olive, which was just over two years ago. I had a really great experience um, with her, which would make you think, oh, your second birth, everyone says it's easier and um, like you go in more confident because you've already been through it, especially if your first was a little bit um, more difficult. But because Olive's birth was really straightforward it was natural i just had gas and air and i didn't need any stitches it was almost too good to be true for a birth a first birth i almost had a little bit more i wouldn't use the word like stress but a little bit more worry i guess going in um knowing i was going to give birth soon with this baby they do tell you with your second baby that you can have a couple more false alarms and i honestly did start like uh vlogging one night two weeks uh, prior to my due date so at 38 weeks I was starting to vlog because I was having um, contractions one night so they kind of just fizzled it off but they were on for like about eight hours and I couldn't sleep through them they were definitely worse laying down and they were still there when I was standing up or moving around but they just weren't as bad and then they ended up going away in the morning at like eight in the morning I had a couple nights like that that one was definitely the worst but I had so many false alarms let's just say so Made it to 40 weeks and then I was able to get a sweep done at 40 plus one. I got it at 40 weeks with Olive and it definitely didn't do anything. Like my cervix was hard, it was long and I wasn't dilated whatsoever. So she just was not ready to come. She came 10 days um, after my due date where this baby, Oscar, I had the sweep done at 40 plus one and I had a soft cervix and I was already two centimeters dilated which is obviously great but then you can also be dilated for a couple of weeks with no baby so I didn't get my hopes up too much but that night which was Tuesday evening I had the worst night sleep and cramping all night like really bad contraction period like cramps they weren't escalating in strength but like I could not sleep it was awful they just it was not fun and I just thought, oh my gosh, if the baby doesn't come soon, I can't go through any more, any more of these false alarms because I'm exhausted because I'm not getting any sleep. So that was Tuesday evening. Tuesday, I still had those period type cramps and um, contractions, if you will, throughout the day, but like every 30 minutes or 45 minutes. And if I took a nap because I didn't sleep that night, um, I could only take 20 minute naps because I was woken up by such a strong contraction. But that day, I just, I don't, I don't know if I was overtired or I was just like basically over it. Patty took Olive and I just went to the North Coast. I live in Northern Ireland, if you're new to my channel. And I just took a drive. I walked my favorite walk, which included stairs. Pretty firm on the fact that the sweep is what kind of started things for me because my body was kind of getting ready prior to that. And I think it was just the thing you needed. Also, I don't think I mentioned this, like a midwife or your doctor basically inserts their fingers and like sweeps away the membranes. <laughs> it's completely painless. Just relax, breathe. You're totally fine. Trust me. It will get a lot more painful than birth. So <laughs> that is the least of your worries. Just relax and breathe through it. It was totally fine. It didn't hurt at all. Anyway, so Tuesday, I just had a great day kind of just by myself, a couple of hours of alone time. And then I didn't expect anything to go any further. That evening, uh, we put Olive down to sleep, and then we decided to watch a movie on Netflix. Uh, Patty's sister actually called around just to see how I was doing, and she left around 8 p.m., and that's when they were like starting to come again, like the night before, and I was like, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have another night of these contractions, like these false alarm contractions, and there's gonna be no baby. So around 8 p.m. is when it started where it was totally bearable. I was just bouncing on my big exercise ball in our front room watching um, a movie with Patty. Every 20 minutes I was starting to get them and it was starting to stick, like they weren't fizzling out. Then around nine, so basically only three major contractions, I guess, if they were every 20 minutes, they were starting to come a little bit less, like maybe every 18 minutes and then every 15 minutes and they 
they weren't getting less sh like in pain they definitely were getting stronger but just a slight increase again i could talk through them i was totally fine but i was just noticing like the feeling of them felt like oh this is going to be it because it wasn't i don't know you just know after you've already had a baby and you've gone through contractions it's a different kind of feeling like the cramping was like more period like and it was more of like a electric like shock and tightening in your stomach so around 11 p.m so this is like three hours after very manageable contractions it is june 24th i'm 40 weeks plus two days almost three because it's 11 p.m i think we're gonna call a little bit sooner before the five minute in between just because I was already two centimeters dilated at my sweep. I'm hoping my body's done some work to keep me in because with COVID, you have to be four centimeters dilated to be admitted or for your partner to come in with you and you have to get COVID testing. So, um, not, not Patty, just me, I think. So I'm not in my like delivery area or, you know, peaceful Zen area until I get that done. So I'd rather plan it out a little bit in advance because it's a 40 minute, 45 minute drive now. So that's a lot of time to escalate, especially with baby number two. So 11 o'clock right now. They were coming down to about 10 minutes for about 45 seconds, a contraction to some were a minute. It's getting to the point where I couldn't really talk through them. Like I could, but it just, I almost wanted to focus through them to just really know if it was getting worse with every contraction. So I really just zoned in and then that hour I was like, okay, if it gets worse and they're going down to five minutes in between the 45 second contractions, we're gonna call the hospital because I just, I had a gut feeling like this is gonna be it. So sure enough, from 11 p.m. till midnight, I monitored them. The time in between the contractions were slowly going down to that five minute mark. Also, I want to point out our hospital, the hospital I gave birth um, to Olive in is literally eight minutes up the road, but because of coronavirus, that maternity ward was completely shut and the hospital I was allocated to was 45 minutes down the road. So I was taking that into consideration as well too. I kind of wanted to be a little bit before the point where it was not you know, bearable pain, if you will. Called the hospital, let them know it was my second pregnancy, which things can tend to go a little bit faster so that they knew that. And so they said, yeah, sure, we want you to come up kind of thing. So we called Jane, she came over, they lived just up the road, so that was perfect. She came right away, that was at midnight or just before midnight. Uh, we hopped in the car, we popped on some worship, and for the full, I think Patty made it in like 38 minutes because he was driving fast. Um, the whole time, the whole drive to the hospital, we were just silent. We just listened to worship and I just really was focusing um, just on like positive thinking. I was praying throughout the drive. Oh, I feel like I'm getting emotional. I feel like I wasn't really emotional in the actual like lead up slash giving birth because you'll find out it happened really fast. But um, I think thinking about it now makes me really emotional so it was really peaceful made it to the hospital and at this point like I definitely could not talk through a contraction and I really had to zone in on just <clears throat> my thoughts and not the pain in the hospital it took us about half an hour to get here and the contractions are coming every five minutes or so less less lavender essential oil I was told so, gonna meet baby soon. Excited? I had uh, a little muslin of some lavender essential oil because someone said that that was helpful and it definitely was calming. It does not take away the pain, please note, but it was calming if you like lavender, the smell of lavender. So because of everything going on with coronavirus, Patty was able to come into the maternity ward with me, but then he was asked to go wait in the car until I was assessed and um, seen to like what, what the situation was. So Alana is away in to get assessed. Um, partners aren't allowed in, so I've been sent out to the car. And 
I have all the essentials. I have a pillow and a blanket, just in case. I was speaking to a doctor there and he said, apparently um, there was a partner who slept in his car for three days, waiting for his um, significant other to give birth. So hopefully this will be a nice quick turnaround. Um, I think once she's had her assessment and she gets into the um, labor ward or like her, her room, then I can go up and bring her all her um, her stuff. So she's got her bag here, she's got a pillow, and then a few other things. So fingers crossed, I can get up and see her soon. Where are you going? Three centimeters, thinning out, not physically. Baby's coming. Well, you will be. To go get tested now. Patty's not allowed in just yet, so you'll be significantly thin thinning out. Looks like you're going to school. Lovely. Okay. Good luck. Correct me if I'm wrong if you're from Northern Ireland and I'm only speaking on behalf of um, the situation here because every hospital in every country is different but I think to minimize people coming in and out of the hospital they want to see that you're like three maybe even four centimeters dilated before you're admitted because um, sometimes it could be a long journey if it's your first pregnancy you can come in and out I know with all of I went to the hospital twice before I was actually admitted so um, just prepare that you might be sent home if they don't think you're far enough along. So she said, because I was three centimeters dilated, my cervix was thinning out, I was a 45 minute drive already, and this was my second birth. She didn't feel safe sending me home, which is very is a very good thing that she didn't. So I was admitted, but after that, this is at 1 a.m. in the morning as well. Because of that, uh, I was there, which is great, but I had to get tested for coronavirus, which is mandatory. So I had the swab right up to my nose. Literally, it felt like it was in my eyeball. And then back of my throat, uh, I think they sent it away to be fast-tracked. Obviously came back not positive, which is great, but I was just kind of laying in that like limbo stage room uh, that they do assessments with all of the expecting mothers. And so they asked what my pain relief plan was and what I wanted to do. And I said that I could still manage the pain. It was totally fine, but I really wanted to experience a bath. I wasn't able to do that with all of because I had some bleeding. So she said that she was able to run a bath for me. Um, it wasn't the birthing suite bath. It was kind of like a, the stage before you go into like the delivery suite. So it's just the labor ward area. So I didn't really know what to expect. That was an hour after I'd been admitted, around 2 a.m. in the morning. So it took about an hour to get it assessed for everything to be like logged and, you know, written down and the testing and all that fun stuff. Um, it took about an hour. So Patty's in the car, in the car park at the hospital sleeping. <laughs> and then around 2 a.m. they brought me to the bath. And because I didn't know what to expect, it's probably a good thing, but it was just like a, a little bit more of a pain relief bath, not like I was going to give birth in this bath. So it was in like an accessible bathroom. So it was like there was a toilet there, there were some wheelchairs, and then there was just like a big bath. And I don't know, I think it kind of threw me off because they, you know, filled the bath up for me and they're like, okay, do you need anything? Pull this string or whatever. And then they left. So it was just me in this bathroom with like fluorescent white lights on, which I could have asked them to turn them off, I'm sure, but I don't think they had like dim lighting in that room because it was just a bathroom it wasn't a room um so i think it would have been too dark <laughs> or whatever but i just cut my eyes shut and put on worship music i'll put the playlist that i listened to on my spotify but i didn't feel the most peaceful in that bath i think because of the surroundings i didn't have anyone with me patty wasn't with me i didn't have a midwife with me and i was just really honing in on what was going on so that i could manage what was going on so i was in the bath um for about an, 45 minutes and then a midwife came to check on me and she was just she just didn't feel easy about me being in there because i was obviously quiet i was zen <laughs> and she said because it's your second you can progress a little bit faster and the water doesn't stop you progressing it just takes the edge off of the pain so she felt like she just didn't want me being in there alone for too long. So she said, if they're getting any stronger, please let us know. And I think you're ready to go to the delivery suite. So literally after she left, it was like my body like <laughs> heard her and they like my contractions definitely got a little bit stronger. The water's not taken off the edge that I'm getting and these contractions are definitely getting stronger. So 
that was at 3 a.m. Also, I didn't have to wear gloves or a mask or anything that was not um, needed at the hospital that I was at. So I felt very comfortable. They got, helped me um, put my uh, dressing gown on and uh, put me in a little wheelchair because I definitely wasn't up for walking to the delivery suite. So once I was wheeled out, I was able to call Patty and literally he picked up on the last ring and I was like, if he doesn't pick up and he is fully asleep, I am going to murder him. <laughs> he finally picked up and he came up literally within like minutes. And so we were finally on the way to the delivery suite. So it was in a different area in the hospital and that was fine. We got there and the room was like dim. Patty immediately hooked up uh, the playlist that I was listening to. The midwife was so, so sweet. She was very accommodating, asked me everything that I wanted. Um, she gave me gas and air because I just wanted gas and air because I know that's what I had for Olive and I felt fine. Obviously, um, I had an idea of if it was gonna get worse, what I wanted after the gas and air, which is, um, oh, I don't wanna mess up the name. Basically, it's like the shot in your butt. So I was like, okay, I know that's what I want if the pain is gonna be, if this is a different labor to Olive, that's basically what I had in my head. So having Patty there just like took a layer of pain away. I think it was like the worry and it was me letting go of the control of me honing in on the contractions. Um, not having Patty there kind of like let the pain seep back in. I don't know if that makes sense. If, if you've been through contractions and labor, then you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But having Patty there, being in a room that was like really calming, laying down on a bed on my left side, I just felt a lot more, okay, let's go. Doing okay? What time is it? It is 3.15. It was in the bath. Oh yeah. It was just like a normal little bath, but it wasn't like a breathing bath. It was so hard. <laughs> <laughs> how, how far along are you? You I'm didn't tell me. Are they a lot more intense now? Be soon now. Soon. So about an hour and a half later, so this is 5 a.m., I've been admitted in the hospital for four hours now. The midwife said, um, if you want to go to the bathroom, I just want to give you a check because every four hours we want to check how far along you are, what's the deal, all that fun stuff. So I was able to get up and go to the bathroom and I remember I was not able to do that with Olive. Like I got up but it was so hard to get there. I felt like I couldn't even go to the bathroom even though I had to go to the bathroom. It definitely was a lot more intense where after the contraction, I definitely could walk. I went to the bathroom, had another contraction. Like, I could do it after contractions. I felt totally fine in between the contractions, even though they were very intense. Um, so then I was able to get back to the bed and have the midwife check me. And this is where it definitely was different to all of. So this is just after five in the morning. She checks me and she's like, you're only four centimeters still. Instantly, I felt like, like, no, like, <laughs> that's not right. Like, I have been in labor, well, active labor, I guess, since like one in the morning, but like, I've been having contractions that were painful since like 11. Like, how am I only four centimeters? It's been three hours and I've only dilated one centimeter because I came in being three centimeters and by five o'clock, so four hours later, I was only four centimeters. I was like, are you kidding me? So she was like, um, if you don't mind, I'm gonna break your waters just to see if that progresses things a little bit. I did not have my waters broken before, so I was like, yeah, honestly, whatever is gonna speed this up because <laughs> I think hearing that I was four centimeters, again, let the pain creep in a little bit because I was like, what? I thought I was doing so well. I thought like, this is the pain that it was before I remember like it's about to happen kind of thing. So I was definitely bumped out. Um, so she was breaking my waters and I feel like she was really going at it for a while. Again, it didn't hurt at all, so don't worry. Um, but she was like, there's not a lot of water coming out. So that makes me think the water is gonna come out after your baby is born, like it's behind your baby kind of thing. But she's like, but from doing this, you're already a five, six, like six centimeters dilated. So that obviously worked to treat. Broken at five o'clock. So 
five to six centimeters and change the position. Change the position right so we're gonna go birth on that. Then this is where it all gets real. So that's probably about 5.15, 5.20 a.m. in the morning. And then all of a sudden I felt like I was getting no time in between my contractions. Like I would get such an intense one and then like 30 seconds later it felt like another one. And I was like, okay, I'm, I don't have enough time to like mentally compose myself to like, you know, prepare for a contraction. And I was starting to get a little bit more uneasy. My breathing was getting a little bit more intense. And I was like, uh, I remember asking like, when you break waters, like does it elevate the pain of your contraction? Cause like, I feel like I'm getting no rest in between these and like it's starting to really hurt. And she was like, sometimes, but it could be your positioning too. So this is when I decided to like, get off the bed and try and lean over the bed. Like they put a mat down for me and I was leaning over, but I just felt like my legs were shaking a little bit too much and I didn't feel very like calm. This is now like 15 minutes later. So this is 5.30 in the morning. I got a contraction and I got the sensation of, oh my gosh, I need to push. My body is literally starting to like shiver and it's like pushing down as if like, you have to do a poo. So that's when they called in the second midwife. And I just remember things, this is where I kind of think went into like, shock but also like this is it this is happening and i also was like oh flip like <laughs> i'm not getting anything else here like this baby is coming so whenever i'm pushing i cannot take gas and air because it makes me feel like a little bit loopy and i just it i i just don't like it so i took a couple to see if i would like it this time because i didn't like it with all of and it just it wasn't really doing anything for me so i was like right I'm just gonna push and I want this baby out of here. So I started pushing, I think at 5.38 a.m. in the morning and I remember feeling so, so determined to get this baby out. <laughs> shock of it all because at 5 a.m. I was four centimeters dilated and I gave birth to him at 5:48. so in shock because we didn't know if it was a boy or a girl and so I just remember looking at Patty being like, what is it and he had tears in his eyes like it's a boy because he kept saying 
it was a girl throughout this entire pregnancy and then whenever um we had oscar he told me later he's like on the car ride down to the hospital i was praying it was gonna be a boy and so he was the reason the guy started crying because i think i was in shock that i didn't know what was going on and so whenever i saw patty crying i was like oh my gosh <laughs> that is me and it's crazy it is the craziest feeling like in the moment you're like i'm never having a baby again but then it's like completely overcome by that feeling of life literally being put on you like brand new life wow there's literally nothing like it literally nothing like it so he was put on me it just felt so calm like right afterwards i think i think she had to give me an injection in my hip for the placenta to come out which i don't remember getting with olive but i think it's protocol they ask if they can give that to me um after the baby comes out so that the placenta come, can come out which it came out basically like two contractions later and um that was fine and then they were so like calm about everything they were like we're just gonna check and literally not even a graze that little boy was so good to me i didn't need any stitches not even like a little anything like it was perfect well, <laughs> i wouldn't say perfect but you know what i mean and i give that a lot of credit all credit to the anabol thing which if you follow me on instagram i'll put it here i'll let you click it you can read what it does but that's definitely the reason i didn't need stitches or anything with both of my deliver deliveries and oscar was eight pounds seven ounces he was not a small baby to say the least and 55 centimeters but um right after because i didn't need anything done they were like right well we're just gonna give you guys some time they didn't even take him away to like measure him or weigh him right away they literally just left the room and asked if we wanted tea and toast do you see grandma dt uh, you are such a calm little boy I can see similarities. Yeah, he's like Olive. Are you giving smiles? Yeah. Oh, oh. look at oh. He's like, oh, where are they? Oh my goodness. This is Oscar Thomas McGowan. He was 8'7", which I totally guessed. And he looks so like Olive as a newborn. Patty and I were able to just be together for about an hour, just over an hour. Um, so I was just feeding him and then Patty was able to hold him for a while. We FaceTimed my parents, which was like one in the morning for them back in Canada, but <laughs> my mom was up. I knew she'd be up. And then um, FaceTimed Jane um, and FaceTimed like just a couple of really close family members um because it was so early in the morning patty was sent home they told him like go home take like take a nap or whatever and then she'll call you whenever she's all good to go so that was around 7 30 in the morning um so patty left i went and i was just like on a high like he was so sweet he was so quiet and we just went to our little bay area and um it was really really chill like honestly it just felt so chill like he was so good i was like pumped with adrenaline so i didn't get a like a wink of sleep in those first couple of hours because i was just so excited i wanted to text you know my best friends my family and i was just like over the moon with him like i literally couldn't stop staring at him <laughs> at all roughly six hours after i gave birth they were like you are good to go like if you feel okay like you are more than okay to go so we're just gonna take the baby to do a final check and then um, you can call your husband to come pick you up so while Oscar was getting checked with the doctors and midwives for a final check that's whenever I had everything packed up literally all in my bed everything was ready to go and I could see the midwife's face coming back and I was just like she's about to tell me something that I'm not gonna want to hear and uh, she came back and she's like, everything is perfect. Eyes, ears, hips, all the checks that they do. Routine checks were great. But we did hear something irregular with the heartbeat. So we got one of the head doctors, specialists to come in and he can't convince himself that he doesn't not hear a heart murmur. And 
nothing to be worried about. They said literally we're not worried at all, but because of this, he needs to be monitored for 24 hours. So after having that like excitement to go home, back to Patty, back to Olive, because I was literally missing her so much, I just like felt my heart drop and I just knew in that moment, okay, I can do one of two things. I can let that defeat me because I just felt I was just over it. I wanted to be out of there. I wanted to go home. I wanted to shower. I felt just, I just wanted to be home like in my like safe place and I didn't want to be in a ward with a whole bunch of different moms coming in and out and just loudness and everything. Even though the midwives were incredible, it just, it just wasn't where I wanted to be because I knew I was okay. But I said, okay, that's fine. Obviously my baby's needs are the most important thing to me and that's why we're gonna stay and that's fine. So I called Pat and I said, okay, well, don't get into the car, you're not coming, but I want a Domino's pizza, <laughs> Diet Coke, fresh strawberries. <laughs> Literally made a list of all these things. And I was like, if I have to stay in for a night alone by myself here, I am going to do it as well as I can. So. Patty came around dinner time. He wasn't able to come into the hospital. I was able to go to the front of maternity and grab the stuff, but he wasn't able to come see Oscar, um, which is okay, we kind of, we knew that. Um, so I grabbed all this stuff and literally had a Hawaiian pizza, I had Diet Coke, and hospital ice is the best because it's like crushed, it's like that like fine little pieces of ice, so I chunked like so much water and Diet Coke with that. With all that being said, in the morning around 9 a.m., he was checked, the doctors couldn't hear anything, the murmur was gone. It's quite common with newborn babies. I, I have a couple friends that messaged me whenever I said that he had a murmur. Their babies had murmurs too, and it was nothing to worry about. It normally goes after 24 hours, which it did in Oscar's case. So we got the all clear, we were good to go. I had a really great experience. The midwives were so kind, like they were there whenever I needed something, but it was just really chill. Like it was a really chill um, experience as a whole. I know for me in particular, I can't talk for everyone and everyone's experience is gonna be different. So take that into consideration, but it's so weird to say I have a son. It's weird to say I have kids. I remember when I FaceTimed Olive, oh, the emotion that came over me. I was like, she's a big girl, like she's, not a little girl anymore. Oh, that's gonna try again. Anyways, very emotional. We're on day six here. He is a dream baby. He is so good. Uh, definitely hungrier than his sister was, so he likes to feed a lot, but that's great. He He's honestly such a good little baby, and uh, we're, we're just over the moon. It's definitely a different ride the second time around because you're not really in a bubble as much. Like, you have a toddler, so you still need a little bit of structure to your day of, you know, entertaining your toddler, but she has taken to him so well. Like, she's so protective, and her C's are T's, so his name is Otter, <laughs> and uh, she just likes to say little brother, so that's her little brother. Uh, she's very protective of him and just always wants to touch his head and take care of him and put a soother in, and uh, yeah, so we're completely over the moon. We're taking it day by day. Um, Patty was incredible and so, so encouraging and amazing and supportive and yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this birth vlog. I hope it encourages you. Um, it's such an empowering feeling to give birth no matter what way it happens. Whenever they're put into your arms, that's all that matters and that feeling is something that is, oh, you can't beat it, honestly. So we have an Olive and an Oscar and we're just we're over the moon, completely over the moon. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future uploads, and I'll chat to you guys soon. Bye.